Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we have the pleasure of checking out round three of the Marco Makes Minisaurus. We've got three more figures here to take a look at now. Again, wave three, we've already gone through six altogether. These are the newest three to release from Marco Makes, but this time they're not actually being sold directly from Marco. They're actually being sold through Siret Tech. Obviously sculpted by Marco, sold through Siret Tech. So we've got ourselves the Parasaurolophus. We also have a Giganotosaurus and a Carnotaurus. My favorite, of course, is a Carnotaurus, and uh, I am beyond psyched to actually have another version of a Carnotaurus from Marco. So far, up until this point, I've only ever had the Kingdom Collection bust of the Carnotaurus from Marco, so now having a full-body version of a Carnotaurus from Marco Makes is incredible. But also, the Dominion-style Giganotosaurus is super cool because I'm a massive fan of the Dominion Giganotosaurus and a Parasaurolophus, so... It's not often we get herbivores from Marco Make. So as a whole, this entire thing is just extremely, extremely exciting. All three figures look about as epic as it gets. So let's jump to a closer look at all three of these. So we will begin with the Parasaurolophus. And straight away, you can take notice to the fact that our Parasaurolophus is in a quadrupedal position. It's obviously standing here on all fours for the time being, looking just about as elegant as it gets for a Parasaurolophus. And again, I must say the detailing on these is insane, like absolutely incredible. It's so cool to see Marco continue to improve, but I honestly don't know that I've ever seen more impressive sculpts from Marco than I'm seeing on these mini source because the detailing is just off the charts. You can see that the head sculpt, if my camera would focus on it, or if I don't drop it first, but if we turn it this way and we kind of get a nice closer shot you can kind of make out how nice the head sculpt is really beautiful crest up there on the top of the head you've got the beak sculpted out really nicely i think the coloration might just be a little bit too bright for my camera to be able to handle once i get some paint work on it it'll obviously be a lot easier to see you can see our parasaurolophus has its head turned slightly to its left and as you lead down you've got that really nice looking sculpt there to the neck nice looking skin texture as well leading down into the body you can see some nice wrinkling and stuff right there behind the arm as you move down you have some nice muscle definition and you can see only the fingertips are pretty much touching there on the ground really really beautiful bone structure shown in the arm as you move down that looks really good and I love the kind of curvatures there in the fingers as it's kind of supporting the weight of the dinosaur and then as you lead up here you can again see how phenomenal the skin texture is here in the stomach region look at how beautiful that is you've got some nice skin wrinkles and stuff as you lead back here toward the thigh and uh, as you lead up you can just generally see like the really nice structure of the dinosaur you've got the spinal column here running along the back and look at how crisp and vibrant those scales are throughout the course of the figure you've got the hip bone right here as you move down some nice muscle definition in the thigh and calf you can also see the kneecap both rear feet are planted very nicely here on the ground you can see that the toes have some nice scoots running down them and you've also got some nicely sculpted nails if my camera could stay focused on them there we go you can again see it all looks beautiful as you lead up here and we lose focus yet again. You can see, there we go, we've got some nice skin wrinkles right there back behind the thigh as you lead out here into that tail with that really, really beautiful curve. And uh, again, this hasn't been cleaned up quite yet. You can see a few areas where there's a little bit of like extra I'm going to have to clean off before painting them. But you can again see that the sculpt looks gorgeous from this side, just like it did on the initial side. You can definitely see that the legs and the arms are in different positions slightly compared to what we saw on the initial side, the leg here is just ever so slightly forward, more so than what we saw on the you know initial side. And uh, again, the texturing, honestly, is just amazing on this figure. Like that is easily one of the most beautiful Parasaurolophus I've ever seen. And of course, it's attached to a base with a really nice earthy area. And I like that we have this kind of like circle here that runs along the outer edge just to give it that final kick into museum class mode there with the overall quality and then the underside has of course mini sores and marco makes right there so the next one is the giganotosaurus now this one i don't know how it's going to blend with the background there being such a light color but you can see that that head sculpt is incredible this one is going to be really exciting to get some paint work on because i know how good marco is at making sure everything that he creates is as screen accurate as possible so i can't wait to see what this actually looks like 
once it's painted up. You can see the teeth are sculpted really nicely. The Giga obviously has its mouth open a bit there. You can see the tongue on the inside of the mouth sculpted out really nicely. The detailing there on the inside of the mouth and the upper side also looks quite good. As you move along, you again have really beautiful detailing there in the face. The ridges start to pick up here in the back of the neck. Of course, they then decrease in size before picking back up here in the mid-back area. We have that really nice kind of like an armored look to the Giga as you move down the course of its back. But you've also got the arms sculpted really nicely. The fingers as well. You can see the throat right there and just generally some nice skin creasing and wrinkling as the Giga has its head turned quite sharply to its left. And looking here in the stomach region, again, beautiful looking skin texture. You can kind of see the skin stretching there off of the stomach as the leg is kind of trailing quite a bit there. You also have some massive muscle definition in both the thigh and calf region. You can see some scars right there on the thigh of the Giga. Kind of like some scoots running down the front of the thigh as well. And a beautiful foot sculpt there as the toes are just kind of leaving the ground. You can see the dinosaurs walking along. Nice scoots down the toes, nicely sculpted nails. Again, really nice earthy texture there for the base, just like we saw in the Parasaurolophus. And then you lead back up here, you have again some skin wrinkles, potentially even some more scars right there. And then leading out the length of the tail, you have a very, very nice curve here, all the way actually curving back around, facing the face almost for our Giga. So it almost looks like it, you know, quickly is making a left turn as something either caught its attention or maybe it was in mid-battle. You can see again some more nice detailing here to the opposing side of the neck and head of our Giga. Might be a little hard to see right now, but you can see Marco has even captured that kind of tear in the gums, uh, like right in the jawline there where you can see the gums exposed. He's captured that, of course, on the Giganotosaurus here as well. And then as you move along, you can again just look at and appreciate how incredible the detailing is on this Giganotosaurus. Again, look at the massive muscle definition in that calf right there. That is huge. And the foot sculpt again over here on this side is planted very nicely on the ground. And then you can again see the skin stretching and everything as we lead out into that really, really beautiful curve to the tail. And again, of course, Marco and Minisaurus here on the underside. But that is a gorgeous, gorgeous Giganotosaurus. And then my favorite of the group is the Carnotaurus, and I love the positioning of this Carnotaurus. I love how it's running along straight away. I think that that's probably my favorite pose for potentially any of the Minisaurs so far. I just really, really like that positioning for the dinosaur. It looks like it just spotted a meal. It absolutely wants it, and it is clearly heading in to grab it. But you can see if we get nice and close, again, that sculpt of the head is phenomenal. And also, again, about as screen accurate as it gets when it comes to a Jurassic World style Carnotaurus. I'm unsure if I want to give this the Demon Carnotaurus paint because it doesn't have the chipped horn. So it's obviously meant to be more of like the brownish version from like Fallen Kingdom. I think that's probably the route I'll go because I really, really love that coloration. But again, it is just an incredible looking sculpt. The mouth is obviously partially open. You can see the teeth a little bit in there. You can also see the tongue slightly. As you move back, you again have all the really nice, if my camera focus on it, all the really nice detail you would expect to see. Nice creasing in the skin, wrinkling here in the throat. You've also got those osteoderms running down the course of the back and side of the Carnotaurus. And the texturing, yet again, is incredible. You've got the really nice arm sculpts. You can also make out the rib cage in the stomach region. This leg is really far forward, so it kind of obscures the stomach a little bit right there. Make out the spinal column running along the back. Again, the muscle definition in the thigh and calf here, as well as the knee. And a really nice looking foot sculpt, again, planted here as our carnal torus is running along. You again have that same style of earthy texture, just like we saw on the others. And then you have some really nice wrinkling and stretching of the skin here as we lead up into the tail. The tail also has a beautiful curve as it's obviously just following along while the dinosaur runs along. And then if we look over here on the opposing side, pretty much the same thing because the Carnotaurus' head is sticking out straight forward as it's running. You can see no real big turns or twists or anything going on. So the head's going to look pretty much the same over here as it did on the initial side. Same deal for the neck and all the detail contained within. But one thing that is definitely different is you can see a lot more of the stomach and the skin stretching off of the stomach over here because the leg is trailing as the Carnotaurus runs along. And again, all the detail looks just as crisp just as impressive over here as it did on the initial side as you lead out into that tail. That is one incredible, incredible Carnotaurus. Like, absolutely one of my favorite Carnotaurus in my collection instantly right here with this Marco Makes version. So the only thing left now to do 
is to get all of these painted up and check them out from there. So let's go ahead and do that. So the models are painted and we'll begin here with our Carno Taurus, which again, I think turned out pretty nice, maybe slightly darker than I would probably have liked it to have turned out, but I still think it looks pretty good. And again, I really feel like this shows off how insanely impressive the models are from Marco. Again, once you actually get some paint on it, like that looks awesome. Like it looks like a straight up living, breathing carnal Taurus right there kind of running along. And honestly, I would love to have a larger version of this carnal Taurus, like a uh, maybe like a 135th scale or even larger. Heck, I'd actually enjoy like a 115th scale version of this carnal Taurus. It's just so beautiful. And you can again see once we get nice and close, like all the detail just pops so nicely on it now. And it is honestly insane how much sculpt and detail Marco has included on this Carnal Taurus. Like just to look back at how much Marco continues to improve and how much he has improved since I had begun reviewing his products or from the first time that I had ever seen Marco. Like it's just crazy. This is about as professional of a sculpt as it honestly could get. And probably better than most sculpts that you'll ever see when it comes to fine detail like you can see everything on it now the rib cage and everything is shining so nicely so the carnal taurus again being my favorite dinosaur of all time is a very special model to me especially since marco is a very good friend of mine it's pretty awesome to have a full-bodied version of a carnal taurus now from marco added into my collection especially one so incredibly beautiful and then we've got the giganotosaurus now this one, honestly, you would think would be a pretty easy paint job, but this one was a little bit challenging to me because there's so much difference between different images and everything that I've seen. Some images kind of make it look like it's a grayish coloration. Some images make it look like it's a greenish coloration. Some images make it look like it's kind of like a mix between both. So I sort of tried to go with both. I tried to give it kind of like um, some slight hints of greens and stuff. Like I really noticed them on this side. I'm definitely picking up on the greens nice nicer here on this side but I also tried to give the entire thing like a, a grayish type of a look at the same time and I definitely achieved what I was going for but again I'm not sure if it's exactly as good as the Giganotosaurus looks again being a smaller model it's always a, a bit of a uh, test I would say sometimes to see how good you can make it look and how realistic and lifelike considering the size like it's sometimes a bit harder to paint a smaller model like this in a realistic way but again I felt like it turned out pretty nicely and again about as decent as I think I could get for a Giganotosaurus of this size and I really think again you can see how beautiful the sculpt is like it is just really really nicely done Marco nailed it even you know including the area there with the split in the top part of the jaw there exposing the gum line and everything like the Giganotosaurus is just gorgeous. Look at that beautiful foot sculpt right there. Again, Marco is so insanely talented. He should be working for like a big time uh, dinosaur figure company, like even Nanmu or someone like that, just providing them sculpts again, because you're not going to see anything more accurate than what Marco creates, more screen accurate than a Marco makes sculpt, because he legitimately like studies the dinosaurs to no end to make sure that his model looks as lifelike and as realistic as possible and again i'm really quite happy with my results of the giganotosaurus i'm just not entirely sure how screen accurate my color scheme is or my paint job or anything so hopefully it looks pretty good again marco's model really shines here once there's some paint work on it but uh the reference material for the giganotosaurus was a bit hard to come by so it was a little tough to really get a good accurate idea as far as what the color scheme was it seems like most of the higher end collectibles and stuff are giving it more of a grayish color scheme but uh, again i still see like for instance the toy monster international and the mattel versions have like a greenish sort of a look so uh, again i kind of went for a mixture of both and really quite happy with how the model turned out and again, I really feel like it just shows off how beautiful Marco's sculpt is. And then we have our only herbivore for this round. We've got the Parasaurolophus. Now, looking at it here, immediately you're going to take notice to the fact that I gave this a Lost World Jurassic Park color scheme. And uh, there is a reason for that. One, it's my favorite color scheme that I've ever seen on a Parasaurolophus. Two, I feel like it's the most iconic version of a Jurassic Parasaurolophus. 
But uh, one thing that is interesting about this is actually there's another reason, which I will get to here in a moment. There is a part three of that reasoning. But this, I think, is more so based on the Jurassic Park Parasaurolophus more so than the Lost World version. And the reason I say that is because if we bring up the dinosaur style guide from Marco and many others, and you bring up the Parasaurolophus here next to it, Look at how perfect Marco matched up the sculpt. Obviously not exactly the same position. He's given his model a bit more life than what you see on the, you know, version in the style guide replicating the Jurassic Park version of the Parasaurolophus. But you can really see again that the accuracy is beyond on point for this. And also again that it really nicely replicates the Jurassic Park version of a Parasaurolophus. But what I really was excited about was this was my first chance to actually use the dinosaur style guide to paint one of my models and that was really exciting because again we have the Parasaurolophus from the Lost World so I gave it that same style of color scheme that same style of coloration here compared to what we see on the dinosaur style guide but what is interesting in the dinosaur style guide is that it actually shows off what the male and female variants would look like of the Parasaurolophus so I gave this one a male sort of a color variant and the one thing that really distinguishes the female from the male is this reddish coloration running along the head down into the neck the dinosaur style guide taught me that and lets me know that again that's the like major difference between the two sexes of Parasaurolophus from the Lost World Jurassic Park but yet again it looks really really good the coloration I felt like turned out pretty nice mostly thankful to the dinosaur style guide again guiding me in the way of the coloration of the Parasaurolophus but also because Marco's sculpt is so insanely phenomenal like look at how nice the detail is on this again this is another model that would be a great one to have in a larger scale I would just absolutely love to have like some very large uh, versions of these like maybe 1 35th scale or something but it is still really really cool to have these mini sores because they're very convenient and they can fit pretty much anywhere which makes them super convenient for a collector like me that has tons of models in their collection if you happen to be like running out of room these mini sores are a great way to go to have really highly detailed Jurassic style dinosaurs in your collection without taking up too much room but again with my paint job hopefully it turned out pretty nice it's my first time ever actually painting a uh, Jurassic or Lost World Jurassic Park style Parasaurolophus and I've always been almost a little intimidated by the paint scheme of the Parasaurolophus like I always really wanted to try it but I was never too sure how good it would turn out but I was pretty happy with the results. However, again, the, one of the main reasons and the third main reason why I went with the Lost World Jurassic Park color scheme on this Parasaurolophus is because I also have a Nanmu Parasaurolophus that was sitting here. This is one of the figures that they had sent that was kind of like an extra, like unpainted one that was a... I think an extra potentially with the Parasaurolophus. I forget exactly when this one was released, but I had to give them the uh, Lost World Jurassic Park color schemes because first of all, they're like almost the same scale. You can see they actually look really, really cool together, but also because I gave the Nanmu version, if I actually set Marco's version down here, I gave the Nanmu version the kind of uh, female color scheme where we don't see the red up into the face or anything like that. So. It was neat to have the opportunity to paint both a male and female for the Parasaurolophus, so I can have both now in my collection. And uh, I also have been wanting to paint one of these for quite a while, because I feel like the sculpt is super nice on this, having that almost maquette type look. But again, once I actually pulled this one out, and I had put it next to this one, and I realized how similar in size they were, obviously the Marco version, the male, is a bit larger than the Nanmu version, the female, but they look so insanely cool together. I just couldn't help but give them both again the different Lost World Jurassic Park paint schemes. So hopefully this turned out pretty nice. And again, you'll now have at least an appreciation more so for how good these Marco Mix sculpts are. So as far as a size goes for our different mini sores of Wave 3, for the Parasaurolophus, lengthwise, you're looking at right around 4 inches or 10 centimeters, and height-wise, about 2 inches or a little over 5 centimeters. For our Giganotosaurus, lengthwise, you are looking at from the snout to the tail, I'd say, uh, actually a little over 3 and a quarter inches, maybe in between 3 and a quarter and 3 and a half inches, or around 
I'd say eight and a half centimeters roughly. Of course, the Giganotosaurus would be quite a bit bigger if it wasn't kind of curved in. So uh, Marcos managed to take this dinosaur, which would be a little bit longer and sort of like shorten it by turning the body. And then height wise, the highest point might be the ridges running along the back, but I'm not entirely sure. But you're looking at around two and a quarter inches or approaching six centimeters roughly to that area. And then for our Carnotaurus, which is definitely going to be the shortest because he's kind of uh, crouched down a little bit, you are looking at lengthwise just under five inches or around the 12 and a half centimeter range. And then height wise to the top of the horn right there, you're looking at about an inch and a half or four centimeters. For a size comparison, there is Mr. Papo T-Rex, the Attack Pack Colovasaurus, and Robert Muldoon from the Mattel Jurassic World toy line next to our mini sores right here. And you can definitely see that they are exactly that. They are mini. They are quite small. Although, I would say that these seem to potentially be the largest of the mini sores so far which is something to take note of, but for another comparison, here we have a Captives Parasaurolophus next to the Marco Makes version on the right, and then we also have a Mattel Ceratosaurus next to the Marco Makes Carnotaurus on the left. So if you happen to have any of the minis from, of course, the Toy Monster International line or the Mattel line, then this should hopefully help to give you an idea of the size of these figures here. And then for an idea of the size difference compared from the first and second waves of Minisaurs to the newest one, the figure that we have on the right there is Rexy. You can see Rexy is from the first wave of Minisaurs. She's a bit smaller than what you see nowadays with these Minisaurs, but the Cynoceratops here on the left is from Wave 2, and again, you can see that these figures are similar in size, I would say for sure, to Wave 2, but, uh, you know, a few like the Giganotosaurus and even the Parasaurolophus, which they are pretty big species, are definitely a little bit larger than what we saw in Wave 2. But definitely really cool, especially to see these figures here all next to each other. So these brand new mini sores, which are created, sculpted out by Marco Makes, and sold through Siret Tech, are absolutely awesome. Like, I would honestly say these are three of the best mini sores that we have had overall and honestly i think that these are three of the best marco makes sculpts i have ever seen like phenomenal work on marco's part on all three of these not just on the screen accuracy but on the fine detail as well like the fine details of these figures is honestly out of this world the carnotaurus is of course my favorite overall i love carnotaurus it's my favorite dinosaur i don't think that's ever going to change so uh having a carnotaurus here in the minisaur line is exceptionally exciting for me but also because it is a full-bodied version of a carnotaurus from marco makes which i previously have only acquired a bust of the carnotaurus from marco so now i have a full-bodied version here with the minisaurs and i love everything about it the sculpt again is incredible i love the pose that he has for the Carnotaurus running along. Just a really cool dynamic position showing that the Carnotaurus means business as far as whatever it's running after because it definitely looks like it's, you know, picking up some pretty good speed right there. But super, super cool Carnotaurus overall and again just beyond impressive when it comes to the fine detail. We've also got the Giganotosaurus, which is one of my current favorites from the Jurassic franchise as well. Even though many people aren't a huge fan of the Giga from Dominion, I absolutely love it. And I really love Marco's version that he has here. It's also super exciting to have a Marco makes Giganotosaurus. I know he's going to be releasing a Rubber Source version at some point in the future, which I really, really want to get my hands on as well. But uh, I also still really want to get my hands on the T-Rex Rubber Source that was released not long ago. But this Giganotosaurus, again, is just beautiful when it comes to the fine detail again insane amounts of detail throughout the entire figure and of course we have a really nice pose for this one as well with the giganotosaurus making kind of a left turn and obviously it's a pretty sharp left turn because we have the tail curved in the same position so it maybe is in mid battle potentially with rexy or maybe it just heard something behind it it's about to go grab itself a meal who knows exactly but he's done a phenomenal job again on the fine detail as well as the positioning and i really love how screen accurate this Giganotosaurus is overall like it has captured perfectly everything that I know about the Giganotosaurus and probably even some things that I don't even know because Marco is just that good at all the time sculpting out his figures in the most accurate way possible and then we have the Parasaurolophus which again is just beautiful and I had shown you guys the comparison next to the dinosaur style guide there to show you how insanely accurate the Parasaurolophus is here compared to a Jurassic Park version but even though it is uh, 
I mean, it's pretty obvious that it seems like it's based on the Jurassic Park version. I just had to give it those Lost World colors because I love the Lost World Jurassic Park version of the Parasaurolophus more than any that has ever appeared in the franchise. And again, having that Nanmu version to display with it and have both of the different variants as far as the sex goes was just impossible for me to resist so i had to go ahead and do that but again marco has done a phenomenal job on this one as well really nice elegant looking sculpt i love the curve in the tail and just generally the beautiful very calm and peaceful looking appearance to our parasaurolophus like it just looks really really majestic and beautiful overall and again the detailing is just as impressive as you see on either of the other two Minisaurs. So if you are interested in these, these are currently for sale through Siret Tech, which is super awesome to see Marco and Siret Tech collaborating on more releases, making it so much easier for so many people to get a hold of these Minisaurs and uh, just in general Marco's products, because sometimes it can be a little hard to get a hold of his stuff. So the collaboration between Marco and Siret Tech, in my opinion, is a dream come true. So if you are interested in picking these up, I will include links in the description to each and every one of these on the eBay and Etsy shops of Siret Tech. So make sure you check those out. Make sure you grab these beautiful mini sores and also like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.